80% of the approximately 1,400 seed plants grown around the world require pollination. In the United States alone, pollination of agricultural crops is valued at approximately $10 billion a year. Globally, these pollination services may be worth more than $3 trillion. Insect pollinated crops directly contribute $20 million to the United States economy each year. About three quarters of the more than 240,000 of the world's flowering plants rely on pollinators to various degrees to carry pollen from the male to the female parts of flowers for reproduction. Pollinators are vital to agriculture because most fruits Vegetable, seed crops, and crops that provide fiber, drugs, and fuel are pollinated. Globally, pollinators are fundamentally important for the production of a significant percentage of the human diet and most fibers, edible oils, alcoholic beverages, foods providing health benefits, and medicine created from plants. Bee pollinated forage and hay crops such as alfalfa and clover are also used to feed the animals that supply meat and dairy products. Pollinators are bees. There are, by the way, 19,436 named bee species in the world. Wasps, mosquitoes, reptiles, bats, and other mammals. Pollinators are key to the functioning of terrestrial ecosystems because they enhance reproduction of native plants that provide food and cover for domestic livestock and numerous wildlife species. Pollinated plants help stabilize the soil and have the potential to improve water quality. As a group, native pollinators are threatened by habitat loss, pesticides, disease and parasites, and the effects of invasive species both as direct competitors and as negative influences upon pollinator habitat. These threats to the sustainability of native pollinators and their habitat have serious economic implications for native ecosystem diversity and stability for humans. Responding to native pollinator threats Natural Resources Conservation Service in Montana is enhancing pollinator habitat by working with landowners using NRCS programs. The 2008 Farm Bill provides renewed focus on protecting pollinator habitat and offers to help producers who enhance habitat on cropland, pastureland, rangeland, and forest land. A provision in Administrative Requirements for Conservation Programs, which applies to all applicable conservation programs, encourages the Secretary of Agriculture to give priority to conservation program applications that provide pollinator habitat. Pollinators have been added to the list of purposes for installing conservation practices. Conservation programs are an important tool for creating restoring and enhancing pollinator habitat quantity and quality. Many native pollinator groups, particularly those important to agriculture, are facing a serious risk of decline as a result of habitat loss, degradation, and fragmentation. Appropriate conservation programs can promote the use of plant species mixes in conservation plantings, to provide pollinator food and shelter. Establish field borders, hedge groves, and shelter belts to provide habitat in proximity to crops. Establish corridors that can expand and connect important habitat patches. NRCS conservation programs help by sharing or contributing roughly half of the cost of installation. The Environmental Quality Incentives Program now includes forest management, pollinator habitat, and organic production added as eligible activities. 
The Wildlife Habitat Incentives Program can help producers establish native species that are pollinator friendly. Agriculture and forest lands provide a wealth of wildlife habitat and conservation programs helping improve the quality and connectivity of that habitat. In Montana, producers who plant sequentially blooming species to establish an array of plants that flower throughout the entire growing season can be provided extra ranking points for EKIP applications. These plants not only provide a source of nectar for adult pollinators, but also provide a diversity of plants with soft stems that die back to the ground during the winter, allowing the immature pollinator life stages. The Montana NRCS recommends these plantings include at least one grass adapted to the site and at least one forb or shrub from each of three flowering categories, early, mid, and late season. Montana has identified both native and introduced options, however the payments can be higher for the use of native species. Increased habitat for pollinators will improve fruit scent, size and quality, productivity per acre, beneficial insect populations, and the food base for many wildlife species. The increased plant diversity of pollinator habitat will enhance wildlife habitat and may increase populations of other beneficial insects, reducing the need for pesticides. Pollinator habitat areas should be at least a half acre in size for each 40 acres of cropland, pastureland, rangeland, or forest land. Lists of plants suitable for pollinator habitat in Montana are available from NRCS. Site preparation and plant establishment must meet NRCS conservation practices and specifications. Practices that support development of pollinator-friendly species include channel bank vegetation, critical area planting, early successional habitat development and management, field borders, filter strips, herbaceous wind barriers, riparian herbaceous cover. Some tips for producers to enhance pollinator friendly projects. Flowering plants can be started from seed. Shrubs are better established by transplanting seedlings. Test soils for drainage. Most of Montana's native species will not do well in heavy, poorly drained or saline soils. Match plants with similar site preferences. Choose plants that share similar light soil and water requirements and are adapted to the climate. Water wisely. For the most successful establishment of any native shrubs, water weekly or bi-monthly for the first two or three years until well established. Control weeds. Most natives do not compete well with weeds. Start with a weed-free area keep weeds to a minimum for the first two to three years of establishment. Mowing weeds during herbaceous plant establishment will suppress competition and encourage desirable plants. Protect from deer or other wildlife. Fencing may be required in areas with high deer populations. Treatments with deer repellents may help protect new plantings. Management or maintenance activities such as mowing, haying, burning, or grazing must be conducted outside of the growing season or the bloom period. Maintenance will be done on less than one-third of the acreage during any given year. Insecticides and herbicides should not be used in the habitat planting area. Even natural herbicides and botanical insecticides can harm bees and other pollinators. If adjacent crop areas are treated, use one or more of the following actions to limit insecticides in the pollinator habitat area. Create insecticide-free buffers in the first 25 feet of crop area. Use application methods that minimize drift to adjacent habitat. Apply active ingredients in the evening when most insect pollinators are not active. 
The planted habitat areas must be regularly inspected for invasive and noxious plants and other plants that may compromise the protection of pollinators. For complete information regarding available conservation programs, requirements, and benefits, visit your local NRCS field office. Honeybees enable the production of no fewer than 90 commercially grown crops, colony collapse disorder, known as CCD, which is defined as the sudden die-off of honeybee colonies, appears to be occurring across the United States. I think it affects everybody. I uh, haven't isolated anything. There's a lot of research being done, but research takes a lot of money. And beekeepers have pretty much been funding it. Uh, It'd be nice if we'd get some, a little help maybe from the government for, for research. Uh, hopefully they get more answers for us and, uh, you know, so we can keep bees alive. In commercial beekeeping operation, CCD has resulted in losses of 50 to 90 percent of managed colonies. No one is clear why this disorder occurs and extensive research is underway. CCD is a giant wake-up call that we can no longer take honeybees and other pollinators for granted. I think we stress bees way more than we ever did by putting them on the road. It's not natural to pick a hive up and transport it not natural for the bees but uh, you know the demand for the pollinization requires it and we can't just sit here and make a living on just our honey crops. Due in part to the colony collapse disorder and to the continuing decline of pollinator bee numbers, Montana beekeepers are helping to meet an increasing need for pollinators in other states. We only go for the almonds. A lot of Beekeepers will leave the almonds and truck the bees into Washington State for the cherries, mm -hmm. the apples, and uh, pears, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of your fruit. Forces like habitat destruction, misuse of pesticides, invasive species, global warming, habitat fragmentation, and other factors are placing pollinators at risk. Since 1995, there has been the worst pollinator crisis in history. We, we stress them more, is a lot of it, and then maybe a combination of the stress. We don't know what kind of viruses have came with these bees, or these mites that have came in. You know, just, just recently in the last year and a half, two years that we've been isolating, found that, you know, they found at least maybe five different viruses that they have found on bees, uh, but we haven't identified them. How do we treat them? Uh, is it something that's been there forever, or is it something new that has been introduced with the, uh, the trachea or the varroa mites or the hive beetles or, or whatever other, you know, parasites we have? Over the past quarter of a century, declines in wild pollinator populations of various descriptions have also been reported in Europe, Asia, North and South America, Africa, and in Australia. Increased awareness and refocused efforts to protect and enhance pollinator habitat are efforts we can all make to lower the risks resulting from a decline in pollinators in your yard, or agricultural properties, or privately owned lands. Plant native pollinator friendly plants and promote improving the awareness that pollinator declines are a critical concern today.